Imagine you're in elementary school playing soccer with your friends. You're a captain and you get to choose who's going to be on your team. You might be smart and choose the good players, but the other kid is obviously choosing friends so he can win their favor. Well, that just happened in Japan. Last Wednesday, on September 13th, Prime Minister Kishida reshuffled his cabinet. A cabinet reshuffle is when the head of government changes or reassign roles within the cabinet. The cabinet is a group of experts that help support the head of government. In Japan, you're allowed to have up to 19 members. Anyone, including civilians, can be a cabinet member, but at least half must be lawmakers. The purpose to reshuffle a cabinet is to change the image of the government. Another purpose is to appeal to certain factions within the party. So let's take a look at Kishida's new cabinet. As seen in the image, many members have remained. As a matter of fact, six members still have the same position. 11 cabinet members are new, and two former members were reappointed. Personally, I find it interesting how Kishida allowed Kono Tato to remain in the digital agency, but more on that later. There's one more thing that's quite interesting. The Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary Kihara was changed. Although I never talked about this on this channel, there were tabloid allegations that his wife, who was a widow, actually murdered her husband in 2006. His wife has been under investigation twice, so I feel like Kishida had to change him before things got out of hand. Also, there's more women in this cabinet. As a matter of fact, 5 is the greatest number in Japanese political history. For example, back in 2001, the Koizumi administration had 5 cabinet members who were women, and Abe also had 5 in 2014. Kishida didn't make history, but he lined up in terms of numbers. It's also cool that now we have a woman foreign minister, and we haven't had this in 20 years. Changing foreign ministers after a year isn't usual, but it seems like Kishida wants to make the female appeal. Unfortunately, it seems like 5 is the wall. Also, out of the 5, Three are second generation politicians. Critics do not see this as an appeal to women, but more of a nod to the senpais of the LDP. To further bolster the critics' point of view, this is also the first time since 2001 when we have zero women serving as state ministers and parliamentary secretaries. The average age of the cabinet is 63.4 years old, which is quite high, and seven individuals are in their 70s. Now that we covered how the cabinet changed, let's talk about the objective of this cabinet reshuffle. According to Kishida, the purpose of this cabinet reshuffle was based on a decision on the ability to execute economic, social, and security policies. However, the clear objective of this cabinet reshuffle is to not make enemies and to not create any potential successors. There's a few hints to back up this observation. First, the election of two Nikai candidates suggests Kishida's desire to win the re-election. Number two, the reappointment of Kono to the digital agency is to have Kono continue to be the beating sick. Right now, the my number problem continues to hurt the Kishida administration and Kono is in charge of the my number issue. Having Kono in that position will allow the public to bash Kono and not Kishida. Special posts within the LDP are in effect for a year, so with this ending soon, Kishida also changed the cabinet. So when we look at the new cabinet and the special posts within the LDP, it's quite clear that Kishida is trying to appeal to all factions and maintain a balance so that he can get re-elected next year for the 2024 LDP presidential election. If you look at the cabinet faction numbers, nothing has changed. This definitely shows the fragile situation that Kishida has to maintain in order for his fellow LDP members to re-elect him as the president of the LDP. Now, if we look at the party personnel, it's quite interesting. Obviously, Asawa and Motegi remained in their posts. If Motegi was changed, Kishida would have easily created a new enemy within the LDP, so it's best for him to remain in that post. When it comes to party personnel, the most interesting appointment was the chairman of the election strategy committee. Kishida chose Yuko Obuchi to fulfill this role. Now, this is interesting because already 44% disproved this decision. Back in 2014, there was a political fund abuse regarding Obuchi. Her secretary was caught, but Obuchi got away for the lack of evidence. Alright, I said a lack of evidence, but the police did find some evidence, just a destroyed computer hard drive with drill marks. Since then, Yuko Obuchi has been known as Doriru Yuko, or Drill Yuko. During this time, she served as the Minister of Economy, Trade, and Industry, and she immediately stepped down when this came out. When her new position was revealed last week, media asked her about this problem, and she broke down during a press conference. She cried and apologized and communicated that she would try to explain better if asked again. Apparently she already explained what actually happened, but it's been 9 years and we still don't know what's going on. And if you're interested why Obuchi received this role, well, her father is a former prime minister, and given her family background, she might become Japan's first female prime minister in the future. 
The LDP is all about loyalty, which is quite interesting. You could check more about that in this video. Whenever there's a cabinet reshuffle, because the face of the government changes, usually approval rates goes up. But right now, Kishida's approval rate has not changed at all. As a matter of fact, it's only going down. So it's quite clear even to the public that the Prime Minister is only considered about winning the inner LDP 2024 election. The Japan Innovation Party perfectly summarizes the main problem. If Kishida really wanted to make change, he should have included civilians or professionals within certain areas. However, he only chose people of certain factions in order to win an election. Every opposition party criticized this cabinet reshuffle other than one party, the Kokumi Mishito. They declined to make a comment because they said that they cannot make a judgment based on appointment. This has made many speculate whether Kokumi Mishito would join the political coalition with the ODP and the Komeito, especially as Yata Wakako was appointed as a special advisor to the Prime Minister, who is a former Kokumi politician. The representative of Kokumi Mishito, Tamaki, just won the re-election of leadership in September 2nd on the basis of working with anyone, including the LDP. So overall, this cabinet reshuffle was a clear chess move in order for Kishida to secure his position. Most cabinets, especially strong ones, have a clear agenda. For example, Abe had a clear policy agenda of security and Abenomics. While Kishida is getting his job done, he still doesn't have a clear vision. His population policy was lackluster, He's increasing taxes, and people don't like him. The Mainichi just released new numbers regarding Kishida's popularity. In response to whether Kishida should continue his job, only 12% want Kishida to remain as prime minister. 51% want him to quit as soon as possible. So, although he might secure a win within the ODP, he's definitely not securing a win with the voters.